Welcome to the Internet Empowerment Series of Video Tutorials, hosted by author Deltina Hay and sponsored by Plum Web Solutions and Drury University's Social Media Certificate Program. I'm Deltina Hay, and these tutorials are based on my book, The Social Media Survival Guide, already in its second edition. Visit my blog at socialmediapower.com for more social media tips and learn more about my book and my availability for speaking engagements at deltina.com. Neither Deltina Hay nor her sponsors are affiliated with any of the services or tools highlighted in this series. In this session, we discuss the all-in-one SEO pack plugin for WordPress. You want to make certain you have a good search engine optimization plugin installed on WordPress, especially if it's empowering your entire website. So first of all, if you don't know an very much about plugins or how to install them, listen to a previous session we did on an introduction to WordPress plugins. But in this session I'm going to assume that you already have the SEO pack plugin installed. Now once you have installed the plugin, once you go down to settings, there's going to be an additional option here called All-in-One SEO. When you click on that you're going to see a lot of different options that you can use to configure the plugin to your needs. And a lot of those can be a little bit confusing if you don't know a lot about SEO. So let's run through these options. First of all, however, before I scroll down past this, I do want to mention that, you know, developers put a lot of work into these plugins and if you if you are using a plugin and you find it very useful, you might want to think about, you know, donating a little bit of money to them so that they can continue to support the plugin for you. So if we scroll, continue to scroll down, we see a lot of different settings. First of all, when you first install this plugin, it's going to be disabled. So you want to make certain that when you're ready, you click on Enable. Now, the, ne the first few options here are the home title or the home meta title content, the home meta description content, and the home keyword content. Now, these are going to be your meta title, your meta description, and your meta keywords for your home page only. For individual pages or posts, you will actually use the plugin to set those individually and we'll, I'll show you how to do that toward the end of the session. So first of all, you want to make certain that your meta titles are no more than 75 characters long. So that's going to be this information here. You also want to make certain that you're using some of your very best key terms within this title, but that you don't repeat them too often. Now, your home description or your meta description for any page or post, you want to make certain it's no more than 160 characters long. And also include some of your very best key terms, but it's also a, a, it really is a description, so you want it to be very descriptive. And I'm going to show you why in just a moment. And then finally, your key terms or your meta key terms or keywords are going to include keywords that you're using and reusing up here in your title and description. But also you want to choose these based on how you think that people will be searching for your website. And there's a lot of keyword tools out there, including Google's keyword tool. So if you if you do a Google search on keyword tools, you'll find a lot of good resources out there for helping you choose the very best keywords for your site. You also want to make certain that you're listing your best keywords first in this list. Now I'm going to show you an example of how these titles and descriptions show up on your website. First of all, if we look at the home page of Social Media Power, we see right up here in the description bar, we have our title description and that little bar we saw in Social Media Power. And then this same title is going to show up in searches. So if I do a Google search and my site shows up, I see the home page here. Now here is my title description. You notice it's going to be cut off. So again, you want to make certain it's no more than 75 characters long. And also here is your description. So this is why you want this to include your keywords, but you also want it to tell a little bit about that particular page because that's what will help people decide whether or not to click on it. Now here is another page that came that appeared in this search result, and this is not the home page, which is this one, but this is a different page on the same site. 
and it also has a dis different description and a different meta title. And so, like I said, toward the end of a session, I'm going to show you how to do that. And if we go back to our configuration page here, the next couple settings are also very important. First of all, there's a checkbox here called Canonical URLs. Now, you can certainly do a search on canonical URLs and find out more about what that means, but in a nutshell, and for our purposes today, you definitely want to have it checked because what it does is it prevents Google from indexing duplicate content from your site. That can actually be a detrimental to your search engine placement, so just make certain that that is checked. Okay, the next section we're going to look at here is rewrite titles. Now, what this does is it rewrites the titles of each of your posts or pages according to this format. And what this format, which is the the default format for this plugin, what it does is it takes, say, you create a blog post and you have a title for your blog post. It takes the post title right here, it puts a little bar after it, and then it puts your blog title after it. And I usually keep these default settings for my posts and pages because I like the way that it looks and feels. And let me show you, we looked over here in our search results and this is actually the result of that setting. Where you see this is actually the, the title of the page and then it has the bar and then it has social media power. So we don't actually have to do that every time like we did up here in this title here. It's automatically going to append this bar and the title of the blog. So again, I recommend going ahead and rewriting them and using the default format. Now as you get more experienced, you might, you might find that you want to in, include your own format or not use some of them, in which case you would just uh, delete them and make them blank. So if we scroll down a little further here past that area, we see there's a checkbox here for SEO for custom post types. This is an advanced feature of WordPress 3. And if you want to know more about it, definitely go to WordPress.org and search custom post types. And what this does, this setting within this plugin does, is it tells the plugin whether or not to include SEO for custom post types. So we're going to ignore it in this case because we don't have any custom post types. Now this next section, um, SEO column support, determines whether or not you want your SEO titles, descriptions, and keywords listed as a column when you're viewing your posts or pages. Now the best way to describe that is to demonstrate it for you. If we go over here to pages, we click on pages, because I have that option selected, what it's going to show here is my SEO title, my SEO keywords, and my descriptions as I'm actually viewing my pages. And it would do the same thing for posts. As you're viewing your posts, it will show the title, keywords, and description. If you don't want that to show up on this display screen, then you'll just turn those options off. Okay, so moving down, we see some other options one of them being use categories for meta keywords. Now what that means is that whatever categories you, you choose or assign to a particular post, it will automatically make keywords from those categories. I do not suggest doing that because your categories should be very broad. Um, if you, one session that I recommend you listen to alongside this one is I did a session previously called uh, Creating Optimized Blog Posts and I talk about categories and tags and how that can help optimize your individual posts. But what I do recommend for those of you who are really careful about how you choose your tags is to go ahead and click on this Use Tags for Meta Keywords. So if you are assigning tags to posts that are, are reusing your keywords or reusing content that is contained within your blog posts, then I would go ahead and click that because it can save you a little bit of time. You don't have to both create the tags and also the meta keywords within the all-in-one plugin area for individual posts, which again is what I'm going to show you in a few minutes. 
So the next option here is dynamically generate keywords for posts page. Now what that means is if you're say using your a different posts page than your home page, in other words if you're using a static home page for WordPress and your posts on a different page like blog, then what, what this will do is dynamically generate keywords based on whichever posts are on that page at a given time. I have um, heard rumors that this can generate some very strange things, so I, I typically do not click on it. Okay, these next few options are really important. And what they do is keep your duplicate content from being indexed. For instance, you could have duplicate content in your categories, in your archives, or in your tag archives. So you want to make certain that that doesn't happen. So you want to add a no index for your category pages, your archives pages, and your tags archive pages. And then another thing that I option that I do not use is the auto generate descriptions. Now what that will do is grab up around the first 150 characters of your post and use it as the description or the meta description for that post. This is not something I use because I prefer to create my descriptions on my own. And then here is something that, that you can check or not check, which is the capitalized category titles. Um, it's just a preference thing. I, I like to have a little bit more control over my titles, so I tend not to check that. Okay, these next few options are, first of all, you can list pages here that you don't want the plugin to apply to. You can include um, custom style sheets here or anything else that you might want to include in each of your post headers, your page headers, or your home headers. But I don't recommend using these options unless you really, really know what you're doing. And then finally, there's this option here that says log important events. And this would create a, a text file or a log file of um, particular things that might be happening on your site, like like errors or that sort of thing. It's usually used for admin purposes. Okay, so once you're finished with all of your settings, you want to click Update Options. And now I want to show you how to use the plugin within each individual post. So when you create a post, you're going to see something new at the very bottom, and this also applies to pages. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this with a post that I've already created about announcing the second edition of my book. And once I have all of my other settings in place, I've created the post and I have category selected and tags selected. Then I scroll down toward the bottom and I see an area called All-in-One SEO Pack. And this is what you're going to see once you install the plugin. You're going to see this at the bottom of each of your posts and pages. So remember I talked about the, the title this is going to be the title of this particular post. And this is going to be the description. Now if we go over here to this um, search result here, remember this is the title and this right in here is the description. And then I don't have any keywords in here because I actually selected to, in the options, to use my tags as key terms. Now, when I created my title here, I wanted the name of the book above all else here. And then also I wanted to mention that it's for using social media for business success. So that's my title. My description is, again, a little bit more descriptive, but also uses specific keywords. Now, those specific keywords are also reused up here in my tags. So I'm really careful to make certain that, that all those three things are very much in sync not only in sync with each other, but also in sync with the actual content that is contained within this particular post. So if you do all, th all three or all four of those things, then you, you are really doing a good job of optimizing each of your blog posts. Now we also want to make certain to apply the SEO plugin to all of our pages as well. So we'll go over here to the left menu area and click on Pages. And I'm just going to grab a page to use an, as, as an example. Now applying the plugin to Pages is not that much different than applying it to a post. 
but there is one significant difference that I want to point out. So here is one of the pages on Social Media Power. We're going to scroll down to the bottom, just like we did in the post, and we'll see the all-in-one SEO pack area down here. So again, we have our page title, our page description, of course using our best key terms. But notice that we use the key term area here because you don't apply tags to pages. So if we look up here, we see that we don't have categories or tag options for our pages. So we want to make certain that we're entering our key terms or our keywords here for pages. And the other thing that you're going to see if it's different is the title attribute. What the title attribute is, is it actually becomes the text that appears when somebody is hovering over a link for this specific page. So since this page is about services, we might put something in here like social media power services. So what that means is that if we have a link to that page somewhere and somebody hovers over that link, this is the, the attribute that they're going to see pop up as a description for that link. Another difference between posts and pages is the menu label. Now the menu label is used to set the label that is applied to this page within your menus. However, I don't typically use this because I use custom menus in WordPress. And then you also have this option of disabling the plugin on a particular page or post if you like. If you just don't want to apply any of the the SEO options to a page or post, you would just check it there. And that concludes this session on the all-in-one SEO plugin for WordPress. Thank you for listening. If you are interested in enhancing your resume with a social media certificate from an accredited university, then visit socialmediacertificate.net for information on the online courses I teach for Drury University. Please also visit our sponsor, Plum Web Solutions. That's Plum with a B, WebSolutions.com.